I'm Erica. And I'm Sean. And And we we are are the Blanchers. This podcast was created to be a safe place where we discuss topics regarding faith, love, family, marriage, and everything in between through the perspective of an interracial blended couple focused on ministry and mental health. No topic is off limits. We're about to have a dog conversation through the eyes of a Latina scholar, life coach, mother, and wife. Along with the perspective of a Black king, engineer, entrepreneur, father, and husband. We're about to take brown and Black excellence to a whole new level. Family Family Unlocked Unlocked starts starts now. now. Hey everyone, this is Erica. And this is Sean. And this is episode one from season one. Congratulations, Mr. Blanchard. You have started your podcast. I started our podcast. Yes, it is our podcast. And we're excited to share with you this venture and how excited we are to start. Yes. It's doing what we love. Talking. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. (laughs) I like it. It is really exciting. So we want to introduce ourselves. We are, as you noted in our intro, we are a blended family where we have been married for 10 years. 10 years. Almost 11. Yeah. In two months, it'll be 11 years. Yeah. Together for 13, almost 14. Mm -hmm. Can you believe we've been together 14 years? No. To be honest (laughs) with you, no, I can't. I believe. 14 years. I can't believe that. It's time. I don't think I've ever liked anybody more than (laughs) Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's pretty accurate. I think that's pretty accurate. Oh man, this is our first podcast. I'm really excited. I do want to just congratulate you, babe, because this has not been easy. I know we had mentioned it a couple of months ago that that we were going to start this, and mm-hmm. we were excited to start it because a lot of people would ask us like how we do it, and especially like because you know we're in the community, yes, in the streets, <laughs> and uh, we would get asked for opinions and suggestions on how to improve their life and uh, marriage. And so, I mean, we don't have all the answers, but we do what we do do. We do do. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do. As we do talk, we do talk and we like to invite people into conversations and have talk about hard topics. Yeah. I think our conversations are pretty thoughtful and insightful, right? So that's usually the areas of topics that we kind of like to address, Mm -hmm. you know, and some of them are challenging, Mm -hmm. right? And some are funny, you know, some are thoughtful, just different topics, you know, and I think that's the reason why our friends or family are so engaging when we have these conversations, right? Just because, you know, it sparks thought across the board, you know. And we're not afraid. We don't shy away from uncomfortable conversations and we know how to dialogue and not to take things personally. Yeah. I think that's a great trait and gift that you and both you and I have learned and developed over time is that we don't take things personally. Our feelings might get hurt, but overall, if a person feels the way they feel and they say the things they say, then, you know, that's, that's, they're right. right? Yeah. So everybody's entitled to, you know, their opinion and how they feel, but they don't need to change our mind. Yeah. It's not going to necessarily change our perspective. Right. I love that. So, you know, knowing that our community out here is suffering and dealing with a lot, I'm excited to engage in conversation with people we know and maybe people we just meet and see how their point of view and things and what works for them and what doesn't work for them. Just to prepare our audience, we will have interviews with people that have different perspectives on love, marriage, parenting, mental health as a mental health practitioner. Seeing things and discussing mental health is really important to me. And so we will meet and join people on their journey of wellness. And I'm really excited about that. And we have our own stories and personal struggles and things we went through with our own kids and ourselves. And um, we're excited to share that. And just hopefully we can help someone. And if we can do that, that'd be awesome. If not, just having fun and knowing that they're not alone. And I'm excited for this journey. And I'm really happy that I get to do it with you. I'm excited as well. And I think because we have so much insightful and thoughtful conversations behind the scenes, I feel like, you know, us being able to essentially take our audience behind and it's like they're in the room with us having these conversations, addressing these topics and these issues that kind of, you know, plague most families, you know, whether it's dealing, you know, how to raise a kid at this time, right? Yeah. How to be a successful, not only parent, but partner in terms of your marriage, how to balance you know, life and work and school and all the other activities that come with parenting, you know, and 
to give a real perspective of it. I think that's what's insightful. And during our conversations, I learned so much from you. Mm -hmm. I really do uh, feel like you shed light and you give me a different perspective. You know, I know I can come from an analytical perspective. I'm like, oh, yeah, this do it this way. And this is what needs to happen. But that's not always the case, you know. And I think because of that, because you ground me and you allow me to view things from a different lens, it helps me grow and it gives me, allows me to be more empathetic, not only with my children, with you, but just with people in general, actually with myself, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm excited to be able to share those thoughts and those conversations with our audience. I agree. So I guess before we start, I think it would be best that we start by introducing ourselves, how we met and why we think we could help people. Because yeah. I mean, duh, <laughs> we know everything. Yeah. No. Well, I'm Erica. And as I mentioned before, I'm a mental health provider, life coach, and I am also a social worker. I am currently in school to get my doctorate in clinical psychology. So my passion is to help people live their most successful, authentic lives. And I find that that's my ministry. It's not just my purpose and my desire to help others, but it is my ministry. I think that is a gift that God gave me. And I love to share it with everyone else. Yeah. So as you heard from my beautiful wife and her uh, so eloquent and poised what description of who she is and what she does. I'm Sean. I'm a engineer by trade, went to school for engineering. I'm currently going to school to be an industrial designer. And essentially, a industrial designer is a person who bridges the gap between art, business, and technology. And so I will be designing products and things like that. And my passion, I think my passion is, I think it's teaching. Mm. I think now that I'm starting to look at certain things that I'm doing that involves that, I think I enjoy teaching, uh, whether it's, you know, doing teaching jujitsu for the kids, you know, interacting with Neo, teaching them how to play football. Oh, yeah. You're just a coach. these different forms of helping out, you know, my current classmates, you know, if they need it, whether it's with a designer or a cat or anything like that. I think I have a passion to teach and to help in that manner. So that's just a little bit about mommy. Uh, like you said, we've talked about our magnificent marriage and <laughs> relationship with each other, but that's just a little bit about me. Right. So we can start by, in addition to what we just did, we can tell the audience how we met. Do you want to tell the your version or, or the truth? Which <laughs> <laughs> my version is the <laughs> your truth, version but is we truth. can go ahead and um. We can share. Okay. I'll, our... I'll, I'll let you I'll let you go first because I'm a gentleman. I'll let you tell your version of it. Mine's pretty simple and plain. <laughs> I met you at church. Um, you were there. I don't remember a lot of things that you were a part of, but supposedly you were frequent at the church. Supposedly. I was there. She, she saw me. <laughs> I do remember meeting you initially in our singles ministry mm -hmm. where we were having a class and I remember you walking in and I remember God saying, or I felt the Holy Spirit, but it could have been my flesh, I don't know, um, saying that could be your husband or something like that. Like that, oh my God, could that be my husband? Something, you know, I was, yeah, something like yeah. that. And I said, no, no, oh no, definitely. No, 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 no. And then uh, you sat down and you started talking and it was very like, you know, and um, yeah. <laughs> she likes to, okay. She <laughs> likes to paint me in such a way that I'm kind of like, like you can't see it, but she's always like pushing up these imaginary glasses. <laughs> I do wear glasses to see, okay, but she kind of does that. But so I just love the voice and the whole like her whole tone and how she's like, oh, well, you know, the square root or the Pythagorean <laughs> theorem, and like like so she thinks that I talk and how I sound. It's so it's true, he does. He does. It's no, you know, I just, I've read a couple of books in my day. So, you know, it just sometimes, you know, what are those? <laughs> and anyway, so we met, like, that's when I remember you. I don't remember you including the choir or anything like that, but I guess you were there for a mm -hmm. while. And then a couple months later, was it a couple months? I don't remember time, but you were the tutor to the kids. And I was like, I was the tutor. That's what Jesse used to call him, my son Jesse. 
would call him the Tudor. Mm-hmm, the Tudor. And yeah, and that's pretty much how I met you. But we'll let Sean tell his version. Yeah. So this is the truth. So, I mean, what she told was a nice, eloquent, simple. Was it? It was kind of eloquent. I don't know about the part about, you know, the nerdy aspect of it. Or <laughs> I didn't know him. And he was just, I mean, I guess he was a guy that was there, you know. But so uh, how I remember it is that I was, you know, sitting down, you know, trying to get this word. You know, I'm a good Christian fellow. And I was, you know, listening to this word. And then all of a sudden I see this blonde hair. I did have blonde she hair. She had blonde hair at the time. I think she had apple bottom jeans. Was that correct? <laughs> I think there was boots with the fur, if I'm correct. I'm just, you know, everybody was looking at her. That's all I remember. But um, she came in and it just seemed like you were looking at her, like a video. It's just with, you know, her hair just flaring in the <laughs> in the air. And I could have swore. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's just me. But, you know, I was hearing like, you know, she was kind of like see walking in just a little bit. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But, you know, I was like, who is I have that? I've never see walked ever in my man, life. No effect was... and no offense to any Crips or see walkers. In this. <laughs> she, man, she was she had a, she had a little move. She had a little move she was doing. But she came in and I was like, wow, you know, this this person is stunning. Like, you know, I thought, I was like, who is that? That part's true. She's, <laughs> it's all true. That part is, I was like, she's, she's gorgeous. But I also was trying to, you know, I was trying to be focused and whatnot. So I was the single singles ministry before the tutoring or was the tutoring before the singles? I don't, I don't remember you in the tutoring. Like when I would drop off the kids, I don't remember seeing you. I remember you being the tutor after we were dating and you were like, oh, I have tutoring. And I was like, with who? And you're like, your kids. And yeah. I was like, my kids? <laughs> yeah. So I think the singles ministry was before. So when we did the singles ministry, we can share this. We can share this, yeah. this thing. Okay. So, you know, for those who don't know, essentially the singles ministry was for individuals who were single, but we also, you know, with the intent of essentially being in a relationship and courting. So, you know, what courting is, is that, you know, you're dating somebody with the intention of marriage, right? And so, but we were in the single ministry because we were picking up tools. We were trying to, you know, really figure out the things that we needed to do to be prepared to be that husband or that wife for that particular individual. So- um, I thought it was, well, I thought the single ministry, that class was how to stay single and saved. What? Like, be, not stay single, like for the rest of your life, but how to, okay, you're single and you want to be saved for the potential of finding a mate, but not to, I don't know. I, I, maybe it was like that. I don't, I don't yeah. remember. My, 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 my recollection. I thought sounds, that was more the premarital class that you're talking about. Courting no, I, I think my recollection sounds more correct. <laughs> but the, okay. No, because in the singles is when we did the, it was the owner cracking. Right. That was. Yeah. But that was only because there was one topic about marriage. The rest of it was like how to listen to God and be one with God and not be of the world kind of thing. And And all that was important at the time. Yes, I agree with all of that. But let's fast forward to on the cracking part. Yeah. So let's. So we'll we'll talk about the part where, you know, we were describing it was like our marriage, our marriage, what our marriage would look like. Yeah. How do you know? I think it was like something like, how do you know when it's God or something? Yeah. Something along those lines. Bringing your mate. Like, how do you know that this is the one kind of? Yeah. And so I remember we had that conversation. Like, she was. Do you know who facil- Do you remember who facilitated it? It wasn't Bishop, was it? It was First Lady. It was First Lady. Okay. I, yes. Yes, I do remember because there was. Because I remember the face she made after yeah. I made that comment. She was like, oh my God. This girl. <laughs> yes. So when Erica was describing her partner and whatnot, and she. All I remember from it is that she was like, it, it's going to be on and cracking, right? Because- I said, what I said was. I would trust when God brought that person to me because I know he would have, he is a smart God. He's a good God. And he had created this person and designed this man just for me. And when we are married, it's going to be on and cracking. On and cracking. And all I have was like, oh my God, on and cracking. I was like, oh man, I don't know who her husband's going to be, but <laughs> he's going to have a handful because that is... <laughs> And she loved God and she, you know, going on fire for the Lord and all that. And she was like, but it's going to be on the crack. And I was like, hallelujah, right there. 
Um, and you know, it's funny because at the time, I, my best friend at the time was sitting next to me and I turned around and looked at her and she's like, yep, you just said that. And yeah. I said, I'm going to be known as the girl that said, on and crack it. She said, in church. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a mental note. That was a mental note. But seriously, on the serious note, I thought I was like, okay, you have this gorgeous woman who has a clear idea of what she wants and what she wants for her husband. And she, even though she, you know, you say on and cracking, but she know that she is willing to love her husband. And she's like, I'm willing to give my all to this person. It wasn't just necessarily physical. It's going to be on and cracking because I know what I can bring to the table. Right. I know the woman that I am. And I, and I know that God will present the man that he has for me right. to be there. So I have no problem with saying it's going to be on and cracking. Right. Exactly. See, yeah. I'm glad that you saw it through that perspective yeah. because that's exactly what I meant. I meant when I find this person, I know God makes no mistakes and this man and I will build an empire together and him and I will build each other up and whatever he needs, I will meet that need because I am his partner. He has a dollar. I'm going to turn that to a thousand. Like trust and believe me and him together are going to rock it. Yeah. And that's how I continue to believe because I know that, like you said, you know, I designed him specifically to meet my needs yeah. as a wife in its entirety, not just the intimacy set, which is a big, important piece, though. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, it's, it's important. It's but everything important. else is just as important. Now, I want to, maybe we can fast forward a little bit because I think there's some... Yeah, because the audience doesn't want to hear your lies anymore. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's not <laughs> lies. It's, it's not lies. I mean, some things may be embellished a little bit, but they're, none of them are 100%. lies. 100%. They're not... 100% that would okay, maybe. Okay, fast like forward to what? 92% maybe. Um, 97. 95.6. But what I was saying is I kind of wanted to fast forward a little bit because I think to the point that we actually were going through the process of courting, right? We were actually, you know, dating each other. And I think this was very unique is that, correct me if I'm wrong, when we were dating, was I working at the time? No. Oh, I wasn't working. Okay. Now, that's a very interesting thing is because I didn't have a job. I was actually, you know, I was unemployed, you know, not without trying, but I was unemployed. And I was with this woman who was an amazing woman and whatnot. But during this time, I had a conversation with a friend. We were just talking about, you know, kind of what is it about this individual that made you, you know, be like, okay, this is the one. During this time when I didn't have a job or whatnot, this beautiful woman of mine really helped elevate me and pull me out of a, a state of, you know, depression, to be perfectly honest with you, because I couldn't find a job. I was out of work for almost a year and a half, you know, was struggling, you know, essentially. And even though I, you know, had a background in, in engineering and has worked as an engineer and how, all this stuff at that particular moment, that's not where I was at. So the beauty about Erica is that during this time, she helped me. I mean, we would go grocery shopping, you mm -hmm. know, together and she would make sure that she would get something for me, even though she, you know, it was her and it was the boys. But she would make sure that me and at the time my mom was staying with me, me and my mom had food and she would speak life into the situation. Mm. Um, and it really resonated with me. You know? Well, to be fair, I, I wasn't working either because I started going to church when I was a bartender. Because I believed that God had more for me and that that's not where I needed to be, I decided to take a leap of faith and leave my job. During that time, there was this huge, a slight recession because it was during that dot-com issue that happened. And that's why you couldn't find a job. And then there was this unemployment issue where the government shut down and they weren't giving people unemployment mm -hmm. anymore. And so they, I ended up getting $43 a week. So I was going to programs, getting food and nobody knew, like I was struggling because I had taken that leap of faith. So I was embarrassed to say like, <laughs> it's not looking good. <laughs> you know? And that 43, $43 a, a week. week, put that in perspective, $43 a week. She was living off of that. I mean, apartment, getting food, gas, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And of I had to pick up the kids and take, you mm -hmm. know, and, but I would look out for programs that were paying people's rents because it was a recession. So they were helping with the rent and I would qualify for it. And I don't even know how I qualified because typically when you're a bartender, you're working under the table. And so I had no proof of income mm -hmm. and 
all of that stuff. But I would get approved and I would get approved for months. It wasn't like one rent or it was months. And I would volunteer at like food closets. Yeah. And I would volunteer there and they would give you food yeah. for the volunteers. And they didn't know that I needed it. And so I would bring you food. Mm -hmm. I would bring you and your mom food. And I remember one day I brought food and your mom was like, we don't eat this stuff. And I was like, yeah, well, you're not going to eat that. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, OK, miss, you know, like ma'am or whatever I would call her. And, and then I got a job. And I remember that specific time I had $80 left after. And so I told you we can go buy a couple groceries at Walmart or we can have a shopping spree at the dollar store. The dollar, there was a Dollar Tree? Yeah. Dollar, yeah, the Dollar Tree, yeah. And we splurged. Dollar Tree was, but we felt like kings. <laughs> yeah, and that was one of the memories, like one of the stories that we built from. Yeah, and it's it's humble beginnings. It really is, and it shows you just how God's hand has been all over this relationship, whether us together or individually. Mm -hmm. You know, he's... His, his hand has, has been all over it. And so I also want to speak about Erica. And you'll hear me uh, several times call her my wife. And whenever you hear me say my wife, that's what I'm referring to there. I would hope yeah, so. Well, but yeah, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but she has an uncanny ability to manifest where she wants to be, what she wants to accomplish and what she wants to do. So during those times where we're struggling financially, you know, and in other areas, she would be like, hey, Let's go for a ride, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, when we were first in. When we first in. You're like, let's go for a ride. I know, you know, you're in a space where you're kind of like, you know, there's no work, you know, struggling, you know, to get food and, and stuff like that. Let's just go for a ride. Just to give the audience some perspective. Yeah, go ahead. Like, so when I would come and visit him, visit Sean, his apartment, the blinds would be closed. Mm -hmm. It was dark. He'd be playing these sad songs. He would be at the computer from morning to night. And then he'd just go to bed. And at one point, he had this tiny TV. Yeah. And the cable got shut off. Mm -hmm. You're barely able to make your PG&E. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time it was like $300 because somebody wouldn't turn off the yeah. heater. Mm -hmm. And he was trying so hard to make ends meet. He wouldn't ask for help. He didn't ask. Like, I would tell him, this program is helping this program. But his belief was God's going to help me. And and it reminds me of that story of, but he sent you three boats and you didn't. You yes, didn't 100%. 100%. But he was so adamant, like, this is not what God wants for me. He doesn't want me to be this bad. He, mm -hmm. I know he's going to give me the right job. And eventually he did. Like, he ended up getting a job at Apple because you held off from the other jobs, mm -hmm. you know. And so it did. It just didn't feel good. No. You know, it was painful. But that, for me, I started to think, this kid is, he's depressed and he's not realizing it. So I would make him suggestions like, you should take walks. And he used to live by San Jose State. So I would tell him, why don't you go for a walk and just thank God for the grass that you see and the trees that you see and the leaves. And he's all, you know, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and so one day he told me, you know, I got up early and I put on some sweats and I put on my tennis shoes and I decided to run to San Jose State. And so I got up and I was excited. I started running. And you know what happened? I said, what happened? So I fell. <laughs> I busted my butt. <laughs> yep. I do remember that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no big deal. You know, like everybody falls. It's fine. I went to his house. His knees were so busted. Like busted where he should have went to the doctor because he could have gotten an infection. Like they were bad, but he had no sh insurance, no health insurance. And he's like, this is what happens when I take your advice kind of thing. right? And that must've been like a blow to the ego. Like if, you know, just it couldn't get any worse, probably mentally it felt like that. Yeah. But a couple of days later you got up and went again. Yeah. And I started noticing that you just started to do the work. Okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go. And thankfully, the Lord like gave me a job that was like down the street from mm -hmm. your house. So every lunchtime, I would have him come and we would eat and whatever I could find to make like a sandwich or something. And we would eat on the grass and we would talk about how pretty everything was and where we wanted to live and what we wanted to do. And 
I would tell him I'm going to pick you up after work. And I would have a couple dollars and I would have Jesse and Eric with me. And we would pack up. I had this little silver Taurus. We called her Ethel. Good old Ethel. <laughs> and we would get some ice cream. Sometimes I could afford foster free. Sometimes Sean would have enough money from tutoring because he would help through tutoring like some kids and they would pay him. And so he would have some money from tutoring and we would get, if we had enough, which was like 20 bucks, we would get foster freeze. If we only had 10, we'd get McDonald's and we'd get the ice creams, the McDonald's ice creams, because we couldn't afford a meal, Hmm. but we would drive around Evergreen. He didn't know where Evergreen was because he wasn't from here. So I would take him into Evergreen where the mansions were and the big homes. And I would tell him, okay, pick your house. And he was like, what? (laughs) If you don't get out of this neighborhood, they're going to call the cops on us. (laughs) And I would tell Eric and Jesse, okay, you guys pick your house. You know, we can have any house we want. It might take us some time, but we can get any house we want. So that's what he's talking about when he brings up the manifestation. Yeah. And it was so worth it. I needed that. And I think we all needed it. I think, you know, you need to dream, especially when you're going and you're dealing with these circumstances in life, whether it's internal issues that you're dealing with or external issues, you're battling something. And so sometimes it just seems overwhelming and all encompassing. And so the fact that you were able to see that, right? And it's even more than that, because you could have been like, man, this guy is broke. He's not working. You know, I don't feel like doing that. I I barely have enough money myself to do this. You know, I could do bad by myself and just me and my kids. And, you know, hey, he got to figure it out. But that wasn't the case. You know what I mean? And and you took a chance. And you really did. You really did take a chance, because I'm sure there's people who was like, why are you with him? You know, but you did take a chance and you did believe and you did have faith in God and you have faith in me. I can see that there's more there. And I think that's attributed to your faith. But you have a very, very powerful connection with God and you trust and you listen to him. So I'm glad that you did. I really do. (laughs) It it worked out. Um, But I think sometimes when people look at us and they see where we're at now and and they see the things that we've accomplished, it's it's all through the grace of God, right? Just so we can let the audience know, no, we got a house and everything. Yeah, we did. But I didn't want to say all that. I don't want to be all up in my business and stuff like that. But, <laughs> but yeah, we No, but I mean just to give context, yeah. you know, like why you say what you said that we eventually like got one and Yeah. And I remember bringing Eric and Jesse here and they were like, What in the heck? You know, so God is real and God will put the desires of your heart like for hundred percent. Yeah. Like our story is, you know, is our faith. Our faith is our rock. It's, it's what allows us to keep moving forward and doing that. And, and whatever it is you believe in and you trust in, I think it's important to have something, to believe in something greater than yourself. I mean, I do believe in work. And that's one thing that you'll hear said in scripture, you know, faith without works is dead. But I think that you, you have to put in the work. But I think you have to believe that you can get to this area outside of where you're at. And I was fortunate enough that I had a person that not only was a a believer, but she was a prayer warrior, right? She was a person who understood that if she believed it, if she trusted not only in the word, but trusted in God, that she continued to have faith, that that thing that she wanted was going to come to pass. And to me, that was amazing. And that's something that, you know, you continue to have that now. But yeah, that's that story. So... Yeah, that's that's how we met. And the rest is history. <laughs> you know, and 25 kids later. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just, <laughs> it does feel like we have a lot of kids. <laughs> it does feel like that. But we only have four. Yeah. And then we have our parents that we take care of. I have my grandma who lives with me. And we take pride in taking care of his mom and my mom. Yeah. The best we can in the circumstances they're in. But so it feels like we have like 20 kids. Yeah. Even though we don't. It just we just have a lot of responsibilities, and we also work and we go to school. So, and it's not it's not like you know we're not complaining. We're we're definitely appreciative of it, but it is a lot of work, you know. And I think because you want more for not only yourself but for your family, you kind of have to put in that work, yeah. right? And we we want to because we're ambitious people. Yeah, we are. And that is one thing. If I'm not doing something, I'm bored. And if I'm bored, I'm harassing this guy. And if I'm harassing this guy, he's like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. But we are best friends. We've grown together. We've essentially grew up, became 
adults, even though we started dating in our late twenties, now that we're in our late thirty something. Okay, we're pushing forty. Is it pushing forty? How do you, anyway? Is it pushing forty when you're on the other side of it? I mean, Are I mean, you may, it? maybe you're pulling it? it. I think that's what we're pulling uh, to get back to the thirties. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to go back. No, 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 no. I that think was a lot of work. Where we're at right now is where we need to be, right? And we enjoy each other. It wasn't always like that. I think that's why we're having these conversations and we decided to start this because we have been through a lot. And I remember one time just going through so much with the older boys Mm -hmm. and the babies were always sick and we were trying to take care of our parents. And at one point I was just like, I knew I wasn't going to leave you. I knew we weren't going to get a divorce, but I was like, I guess we're just going to be in a miserable marriage for the rest of our lives because it just, it felt like the dread and the difficulty of like even waking up because we were so exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually that we didn't see the end, Mm -hmm. you know? And even when, what do you do when you've put in the work and you're still exhausted, you know? And so thankfully God saw us through and we got through it and we're still together and we're, we're stronger than ever. And, you know, I can remember pivotal moments of when I realized every chapter I loved you more and more. You know, one of them was like when we got married, our first marriage, because we got married twice. Mm-hmm. We got married in January and then we got married in July of 2013. Your wedding anniversary. And it was our first one that I was like, I'm so happy I'm marrying you. And then when I gave birth to the twins, I remember looking at you thinking, I love you more today than I've ever loved you. And that's it. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) And there was another time where it was just, oh, when, you know. When I woke up this morning and you were covering, you're like, there was other instances that we'll share. But um, so, yeah, I'm excited to do this with you, to walk this life with you, and to share this podcast with you and build our empire and help people. Yeah, that's the goal. Our goal, as we mentioned before, is to help. Right. Through our experiences. Now, we're not experts, Mm -hmm. you know, at anything. We don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. We really don't. We have most of them. We have a good portion. (laughs) So make sure you keep listening. Um, (laughs) But we just want to share our experiences. And I think that's something, especially today, that a lot of our peers, a lot of the younger generation, they need that. Mm-hmm. They need the wisdom from people who have experienced it. And it doesn't mean that they know everything, but it gives you a different perspective. Sometimes it just helps you understand that I'm not going through this alone or I'm not unique in this particular situation and that, you know, they've experienced it. They've dealt with it. They've overcome it. So I know that it's possible. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's what you need to understand is it is possible to overcome these situations. Sometimes you just need the, a different perspective, a different mm-hmm. outlook. And that's what my hope is that this podcast can provide. It just gives you a different outlook, a different perspective as to what our family is about and what it is that we're dealing with and how we were able to overcome. And and to be honest with you, a big theme in this is our faith, Mm -hmm. right? Our faith foundation. It's our foundation. It really is. And it's helped us to overcome a lot. You know, now we're not perfect by any means. You know, we are just who we are. This is we Erica and Shine. It is what it is, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, my <laughs> I say all that, but Absolutely. Yeah. But Absolutely. This podcast to me gives us a little peek behind the curtain. If you think of the Wizard of Oz, it's just a little peek behind the curtain. You get a chance to see, you know <laughs> all this fantastic all this fantastic, this glorious life that we live. No. Uh, no, it's not it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But I think I would like to leave people with this. Not every marriage has to look the same. Yes. What works for you may not necessarily work for me and vice versa. But my hope is to, like I tell every client in sessions, I tell them, my hope is that you can come vulnerable enough to speak your truth, to learn, to build, so that you have the confidence to know Mm. what you want in life and to know what you want in your marriage. That's my goal. It's never to give you the answers because I don't know. No one can tell me that they're the expert of me, you know, other than me. And faith is scientifically proven. It is. I mean, I'm in science and I see articles and I do the research. And there is a component where we call it phenomenon because there's something going on that we cannot explain. And knowing that, 
gives you the okay and the excitement to trust your gut and trust your God and trust your faith and trust what you know you can't handle on your own. And it gives you the freedom to be able to put that trust in something else that's beyond you. And whatever that looks like for a person, for us, it's God. And so that's our hope. And I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready to do it, girl. <laughs> got you. I got you. Oh, I know that. I dress that. Mm-hmm. Well, we thank you for joining us on our first episode, season one. Episode one. Well, it's season one, episode one. What I said our first episode, season one. I'm just confirming and clarifying. We've had this <laughs> oh, conversation. I thought you were correcting. No, not correct. Oh, never. My not, apologies. Never correction. Oh, never see, correction. I saw it live. Never correction. Just confirmation. <laughs> um, drop us a line. Many of you know that we have our Family Unlock Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. So meet us there. Drop us a question or two, and we can air your question on our podcast and try to answer it for you the best we can give you some advice or mm-hmm. some guidance even some encouragement so thank you for joining us thank you like and subscribe yes. that's what our kids say like and subscribe like and subscribe we thank you and we'll see you next time on family, family unlock. unlock peace <laughs>